On World News Tonight, this Thursday, more suspicions of terrorism. Prosecutors say two people arrested in Vermont have ties to Algerian extremists. The inevitable growing pains of e-commerce, botched orders, bad service, toys that won't get there in time for Christmas. Celebrating the birth of Christ, where so few of his followers remain, why are Christians vanishing from the Holy Land? And we'll take a closer look at a holiday tradition 17 centuries old. Ho, ho, ho! I love you, Santa. The man behind the myth. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight, Aaron Brown. Good evening. It is beginning to look like a pattern. Three weeks ago, police in Jordan rounded up 13 people suspected of having ties to Algerian or other Islamic terrorist groups. Then, 10 days ago, U.S. Customs agents got lucky and caught Algerian Ahmed Rassam bringing explosives into the country from Canada. And today, prosecutors in Vermont said the two people arrested Sunday night at the U.S.-Canadian border have links to Algerian Islamic terrorists. As we said, a pattern and maybe a plan. We begin tonight with ABC's John Miller. A United States Marshals band brought Lucia Garofalo and Bubaid Shamshi into the federal courthouse in Burlington, Vermont. And though the charges, trying to enter the U.S. illegally, are relatively minor, both are being held without bail. That's because federal prosecutors convinced the judge that there were too many clues linking Garofalo to people involved with Algerian extremist groups and alleged terrorists. We are worried to the extent that this may not be a simple border case. Border Patrol agents say they arrested the two because the male passenger, an Algerian, allegedly had a false French passport. Over the past few days, prosecutors say they've uncovered disturbing clues which they revealed in court papers filed today. The car Garofalo was driving is registered to a man actively involved in the shipment of arms to terrorist organizations. Her cell phone had once been billed to a group called the Algerian Islamic League, which has also been linked to violence. One of the numbers dialed from her phone belonged to a man under investigation for the theft and sale of dynamite stolen in Ontario. Investigators are trying to find links between the arrests on the U.S. border, the arrests of suspected terrorists in Jordan last week, and the worldwide plot, they say, is being orchestrated by terrorist leader Osama bin Laden, a plot to kill Americans, perhaps even on U.S. soil. John Miller, ABC News, New York. U.S. government officials today maintain that they still have received no specific credible threats. The terrorists have targeted any particular location in the United States. But as ABC News reported last night, the FBI has sent out an internal memo saying there is some intelligence suggesting the terrorists are targeting major American cities, including New York, Washington, and Seattle. ABC's John Martin tonight on what officials in those cities are saying. In Seattle, the city is tripling security around the Space Needle. It canceled the scheduled burning of these paper mache figures to avoid possible troublemakers, but insisted it will go ahead with celebrations. If we change how we behave, uh, terrorism wins. I mean, they, they achieve what they want. That won't happen in New York, vowed the mayor today, as police grew more visible in Times Square and around the United Nations. Yes, we're concerned about it, but we're not in a state of alarm. We're not going to alarm people over it. In Washington, a city filled with symbols of America, the government is also taking no chances. The mayor and key agencies said they have heard reports but not been officially warned that Washington, Seattle, and New York are targets. Has the FBI told you that Washington is one of three that has been targeted? No, I've not been told that. Apparently there is some intelligence information, uh, but my understanding is that intelligence information is not confirmed. Even so, security is, as always, visible. The White House, the Capitol, and the Supreme Court. According to current plans, the city will deploy at least 400 police officers on the mall during the millennium, along with hundreds of Secret Service and FBI agents, most of them within sight of the President and the First Lady standing at this corner. Already, some are feeling uneasy. We're a little nervous. We have to, we have to tell you the truth. We're just a little nervous. I definitely did change my plans. Uh, I, I want to be actually out of Washington. Uh, during that whole period. The millennium preparations continue. 
Late today, a U.S. government official told ABC News, his agency has heard of many possible threats, but is aware of none substantiated well enough so far involving the three cities to announce to the public. John Martin, ABC News, Washington. The government is also keeping a careful eye out for mail bombs coming in from Germany. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service is screening incoming parcels and first-class mail from Frankfurt after the FBI warned early this morning of the possibility of a bomb based on what it called unsubstantiated information. Another scare today, this one in Newark, a male passenger about to board an Air Canada DC-9 jet told customs agents that he had a bomb. So they emptied the plane, took it out away from the terminal, and spent hours into tonight looking through all the baggage. We have other news to report tonight, including a report on what happens when the e-commerce revolution doesn't deliver and you miss the Christmas deadline. And a story about some wood, specifically a floor in Boston. Oh, if wood could only talk. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Zyban. You are in the fight of your life. Just you against your smoking addiction, one-on-one. -on -one. Trouble is, it's not a fair fight, and few people win it. But you can give yourself a fighting chance to win with Zyban. Zyban doesn't work for everyone. Zyban is part of a comprehensive program from your doctor to help you stop smoking. It's different from nicotine replacements. Zyban is the only prescription medicine that's nicotine-free. So you don't have to stop smoking all at once. As Zyban reduces your cravings, you feel like smoking less and less until you're ready to stop completely because you're ready to win. You should know there is a risk of seizure associated with Zyban. To reduce the risk, don't take Zyban if you have or have had a seizure or eating disorder or if you take Wellbutrin. Don't take Zyban if you use an MAO inhibitor. Side effects may include dry mouth and difficulty sleeping. Ask your doctor if Zyban is right for you because it can help you quit smoking by making it a fight you can win. Zyban, you don't have to quit all at once. Oh, I should have used Preparation H. Cool it fast with Preparation H cooling gel. Cools on contact for fast relief. Preparation H cooling gel cools on contact. On the money tonight, another record day on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the NASDAQ reaching new highs. The Dow was up about 202 points to close at 11,405. And on the NASDAQ, stocks up 32 points, briefly touching 4,000 for the first time in history. On the night before Christmas Eve, some Internet shoppers are getting a rude awakening. Not all the gifts they ordered will make it under the Christmas tree in time. Most online shoppers, from what we can tell, are happy with their experience, but for all the hype about the ease, efficiency, and the revolutionary force of Internet shopping, this new economy is showing its growing pains. Here's ABC's Betsy Stark. Many Internet shoppers waiting for deliveries from ToysRUs.com got a nasty surprise this week, an email from the retailer saying their orders would not arrive in time for Christmas. I immediately clicked off and I went shopping. Phyllis Wheeler placed her order with ToysRUs.com Thanksgiving weekend, but only three of the 30 items she ordered for her children have arrived. And I think if you order something November 28th and November 30th, you think, hey, I'm on top of things. Toys R Us has apologized and sent $100 gift certificates. It is one of many internet retailers not on top of things. These retailers have spent heavily on the front end, advertising to get customers to their websites but with online sales expected to double this holiday season, not nearly enough on the back end, managing their inventories and delivering their products. I would be absolutely amazed if there was an Internet company uh, that did not have problems this holiday season. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a new business model. People are just figuring out how to make it work. It's not just traditional retailers such as Barnes & Noble and KB Kids that are faltering. Even long-standing web-only retailers such as Amazon.com and eToys are causing customers headaches. One of the problems in the online world has been people placing an order and not understanding that that item's on back order or out of stock till they receive an email a week or two later. Online customers have also complained about the poor customer service of many internet retailers. The biggest test of that service is yet to come when customers begin returning holiday gifts the day after Christmas. Betsy Stark, ABC News, New York.
In Atlanta today, the backlash, Braves pitcher John Rocker is being denounced at home for an interview he gave about his feud with the fans in New York, in which he also complained about gays and foreigners, among others. His teammates and coaches are blasting him, and so did home run king Henry Aaron, who is now in the Braves' front office. He was not speaking for Atlanta. He was not speaking for Georgia. He was speaking because of the way he felt. And that's too bad, because I think somebody who feels this way is a very sick person. You know, I think that's the most important thing. I think somebody needs to get to him and say, hey, you need to have some, some type of treatment. Some sports writers in Atlanta are now demanding that the Braves get rid of John Rocker. When World News Tonight continues, so few Christians in Christianity's holiest places. What if you could treat wrinkles like an expert would? With Rock, the number one anti-wrinkle cream in France, you can. Developed with dermatologists, Rock's pure and active form of vitamin A works deeper inside skin surface. In a 12-week study, the appearance of fine lines was reduced by 86%, wrinkles by 42%. Something more superficial beauty treatments could never promise. Rock, we keep our promises. I was one hurting cowboy, heartburn hotter than a blown engine, and pain. The antacid I took didn't do the whole job, and Pepsi takes so long. Then I tried Alka-Seltzer. Man, if it didn't work, a whole lot better. Alka-Seltzer, the only one with the medicines to relieve all your symptoms. Boy, it works fast. And only Alka-Seltzer has the effervescent power to speed relief. Alka-Seltzer, made a believer out of me. Get better relief, get Alka-Seltzer. It's revolutionary, state of the art. It's the wind tunnel by Hoover that's self-propelled, so it almost works by itself. Tests show wind tunnel picks up more dirt than any other clean air upright. Hoover, nobody. And you can get a wind tunnel that's self-propelled. Like you. Wind tunnel by Hoover. This is the face of erectile dysfunction. So is this, and this. Fact is, one in three men have some form of ED, a medical condition also called impotence that affects men of every age, race, and background. What else do all these men have in common? They all faced up to their problem and got help. If you're experiencing ED, there's no need to hide your face. Just talk to your doctor. It's the best way to get educated about ED and how to treat it. The Space Shuttle astronauts replaced the Hubble Space Telescope's computer system today. They're putting in a new microchip that is faster than the old computer, but the, it is slower than the ones here on Earth. The reason, according to NASA, it takes four years to test a computer to make sure it can withstand the rigors of space. So they're up to 1995 technology. In Israel, the holidays have special significance, of course. The Holy Land is the place that brought the world Christmas. Jesus spent his entire life there, and it's home to Christianity's holiest sites. So it may come as some surprise that so few Christians live in a place so sacred, and their numbers keep shrinking. In the Israeli-occupied West Bank, where Jesus was born, Arab Christians are a mere 3% of the population. ABC's Jillian Finley tonight in the village of Taibeh. This town has celebrated Christmas for 2,000 years. The locals say Jesus himself once stayed here. And yet, last Sunday, there were exactly 17 people in this church. Taipei is the last Christian town in the West Bank, and it is dying. They are leaving day by day. Even the youth now, if they have the chance to go abroad, they will. The people of Taipei have always prided themselves as being the guardians of Christian culture in the West Bank, but each year, they say, it gets harder. 10,000 people used to live in this town. Today, there are only 1,500. All across the West Bank, the story is the same. Christians began leaving after Israel occupied this land. They are still leaving because there are fewer and fewer good jobs. And unlike many Muslims, Christians have usually had the means and the connections to go. You don't see any increase in population. You don't see any future for this village. All four of Raja al Basir's brothers and sisters have gone to seek better lives in America. 
The town is trying to convince people to stay. One young entrepreneur returned and opened a brewery. The churches are building new apartments for young couples. And there is an unwritten agreement in Taipei that no land should be sold to Muslims. Not even to Anas Atullah, a Muslim who was actually born here. Bad because they, 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 they don't give me the chance to be one of them, completely one of them. Father Khoury is sympathetic, but he says Christians must hold on to the land. It's the only chance that those who have left might come back. This uh, gives us a good sign for the future, that they will come one day and settle here. And that's the only hope we have. The only hope that after 2,000 years, Christmas will continue to be celebrated here. Julian Finley, ABC News, Taipei. In Germany today, the United States agreed to hand over the Rhein-Main Air Base, its main base in all of Europe. It was the base for the airlift that saved Berlin after the communists cut off the city. It's where the hostages, freed by Iran, first set foot in the West. A stopover point for millions of troops over the years, including those on the way to the front during the Gulf War and Kosovo. A long history. The Germans will take over the base in the year 2005. In Washington today, the annual business of presidential pardons. President Clinton pardoned 37 people this year, most notably Freddie Meeks. He was a black sailor convicted of mutiny after the 1944 explosion at Port Chicago, California, which killed 320 people. Afterwards, black seamen who were assigned all the dangerous work of loading ammunition refused to go back and were court-martialed. Meeks is the only one who requested a pardon, and today he called it an early Christmas present said he didn't think it would ever come. When we come back, interesting revelations about one of the most famous men in the world. Good evening, sir. Your finest table. Reservation. Perhaps you'll find it under Washington. George Washington. Sir, that's only a dollar. Only a dollar. Don't you know that with 10, 10, 2, 20, all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents, and just 7 cents a minute after that. Plus, there's no monthly fee. Great rates and no monthly fee? All day, every day. Oh, 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 oh. Walk this way. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. Aren't there enough reasons in your life to talk to your doctor about Zocor? To learn more about Zocor, ask your doctor. Zocor, be there. I'm speechless. Every year on Super Bowl Sunday, we surprise someone with $10 million. But this is no ordinary year. Super Bowl Sunday, the Publishers Clearinghouse Prize Patrol kicks off the 21st century with $21 million. Do not believe in this! It'll all happen on TV and at PCH.com. Watch your mail or go to pch.com. Enter, and on Super Bowl Sunday, the $21 million winner could be you. Nobody in America sells more office products to more businesses than Office Depot. You can shop our store. Care of business. Or you can shop our catalog. Care of business. You can shop online. Office Depot, taking care of business. Did you know harsh winter weather can leave even unexposed skin itchy and dry? Did you know moisturizers aren't always up to the challenge of itchy, dry skin? That's why there's Cortisone 10 Plus. Among these, only Cortisone 10 Plus has 10 moisturizers like aloe and vitamins, plus the power of Cortisone 10 to stop itch and help heal. So for itchy patches of dry skin, even eczema or psoriasis, try Cortisone 10 Plus. We take a closer look tonight at Santa Claus, really. Our youngest viewers are no doubt thinking, what's to look at? He's big, he's jolly, and tonight he's incredibly busy and he'll be even busier tomorrow. Our older viewers are perhaps a bit more skeptical, so this closer look is for them. They may not know the custom of exchanging gifts at Christmas dates back to ancient Rome during the Saturnalia, the winter festival of agriculture, where Romans presented their emperor and each other with tokens of good luck, kind of ancient stocking stuffers. 
there is a very long history to our Christmas customs, it turns out, and Santa has a pretty fair piece of it. Here's ABC's Bill Blakemore. He has a sled with reindeer pulling the front. They take Santa Claus to people's houses. He has too much hair. Kind of fat. Ho, oh, ho. He laughs. <laughs> he doesn't want anyone to see him. I love to do this much. Who is Santa, and where did he come from? Since ancient times, when the dark season came and the harvest was all in, happy male figures have helped preside over winter's feast. The stories say that 17 centuries ago, in the town of Myra in present-day Turkey, there was a Bishop Nicholas who preached in this church. He was a pastor par excellence who personified the Christian model of compassion and mercy. Legends said he raised children from the dead and gave away his wealth. He grew so popular after his death that in 1087, sailors from Italy broke open this tomb and stole his bones, sailed them back home across the waves to the town of Bari, then built this enormous basilica to house them. They placed the bones of St. Nicholas down here in the crypt of the Bari Basilica, put them in this simple sarcophagus where they continued to work many miracles for the faithful. Not, of course, the bones of the living Santa, though this St. Nicholas clearly inspired him. In following centuries, he appeared in North Europe with presents each December for good children and punishment for bad ones. The visits of St. Nicholas back in the 17th century, say in Holland, were almost like a children's version of the Day of Judgment. The Dutch called St. Nicholas Sinterklaes, and Sinterklaes sailed with Dutch emigrants for New York. There, a professor Clement Clark Moore wrote a poem for his children. It was the night before Christmas, but St. Nicholas had changed, no longer a stern bishop. This poem is a secular poem uh, about a jolly old elf who comes and leaves presents for children. Cartoonist Thomas Nast then showed how Santa was sped by reindeer, kept a workshop and two lists at the North Pole. It was not clear what color he wore till a certain soft drink company noticed its red logo could match Santa's suit, in which he looked enormously prosperous. Here's the Santa Claus who comes from 1940, which is just the point where America has gotten itself more or less out of its worst depression ever. A brand new version of Santa Claus who's pretty much still with us today. The other St. Nicholas still works his miracles too. In this Queens, New York Greek Orthodox Church, there's now a piece of his bone, a gift from the church in Italy. It's not Santa Claus. It's not Santa Claus. No, it's not from the North Pole. Of course not. Researchers are still learning new things about the real Santa. But those who really understand all this, how he manages Christmas, how he flies, what he knows, are still the youngest. Santa is magical-like. He watches it over everyone. Santa Claus gives presents for me. Because Merry Christmas. And to all, a good night. Bill Blakemore, ABC News. When we come back, tearing up the famous floor. Before I quit smoking, I asked my doctor, is Nicorette safe? And he said, of course Nicorette is safe. Smoking is not. Nicorette has been proven safe and effective in dozens of clinical trials. And Nicorette offers the Committed Quitter Support Program, which my doc said is clinically proven to increase my chances of success by up to 50%. And when he told me that only Nicorette comes in mint, I knew that that was the right choice for me. So I took my doctor's advice, and you know what? It worked. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Choose your minivan from the most luxurious Chrysler Town & Country Limited to America's lowest priced Voyager. Voyager, named a Consumer's Digest Best Buy 11 years in a row. And maybe that's why more people choose from our family of minivans than any other. Now get 1250 cash allowance on all Chrysler minivans or lease Voyager for $239 a month. Hey, Annie Matthews. What's on your plate today? Today's going to be great, but really busy. 10, maybe 15 cuts. Lunch is here, Annie. I'll probably grab a quick bite when I can. Annie, your two o'clock's here. And maybe get heartburn. I used to think Tums if I'd already eaten. Not anymore. You can take Pepsi AC whenever you need it. 
Pepsid AC controls heartburn before, during, or even after you eat. Of course I can take you. No matter what's on your plate, today should be heartburn free with Pepsid AC. Tonight, Bizarre doesn't even begin to describe this. Imagine people who can't throw anything away, not even their own garbage. Inside the obsessive compulsive minds of people who can't let go. 2020 downtown, tonight. Finally from us tonight, the floor. If the floor of the New York Stock Exchange is the most famous floor in the country, there is a floor in Boston that is an easy second. For more than a half a century, it has been bounced on and scratched, skated over and celebrated upon. Sports fans know it by its full name, the parquet floor. Everyone else will remember some of its history, which ended last night. Here's ABC's Morton Dean. Can you love a floor? Can you mourn the passing of a floor? This floor, yes. For 53 years, it was oiled by Celtic sweat, polished by Celtic pride. It's not sports trivia, but basic Massachusetts math, like two and two are four, to know 16 Celtic championship teams grace this floor. Basic math, 988 bolts. 264 five foot square wood parquet panels. The dynasty years. Bob Cousy to Russell. But also the mythical years. The Celtics had great teams, but some opponents also feared the floor. Tommy Heinsohn, Celtic legend. Now they get totally upset that we, they have to play on this floor. And to me, it was like, because, what are you crazy? Because. Because, well, like the ball wouldn't bounce back or the. An edge would stick up, or there'd be a screw loose, or, you know, all ridiculous nonsense. Nonsense or not, the floor did have its idiosyncrasies. Dave Cowan, you know, Celtic legend. For the most part, if you just let it go, it may, it may die on you. Right there, sort of. We'll see if it, see what I mean? How about, oh, yeah. like, like, see, it just didn't quite come up. There was no attempt to discourage an opponent from believing the floor was spooked. Bill Russell, Celtic legend. We didn't encourage it, but we didn't discourage it. We said if that's what they want to believe, yeah, that's good. Last night, a final game. Celtic legends signed their goodbyes. John Havlicek. The Coos, Bob Cousy. Bill Russell. A floor can be loved. It's passing can be mourned. Morton Dean, ABC News, Boston. That's our report for tonight. I'm Aaron Brown. For all of us at ABC News, good night. From ABC News tomorrow, the Christmas cheer is with Good Morning America. Don't miss performances by Garth Brooks, Kenny G, 98 Degrees. It's a very special Christmas Eve morning tomorrow. And on World News Tonight, getting through Christmas. Have we forgotten why we celebrated in the first place? What are we trying to prove? Watch World News Tonight. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.